All right, hello, YouTube. We're talking Michigan being cheaters today. Yeah, and a Michigan manifesto. We have a manifesto on the show. We have a it, manifesto. And it does not come from me or Jack, which is the yep. upset of the century. Or Casey or I. So uh, watch, guys like, to see. subscribe, enjoy, comment for the algorithm. Thanks. Hello. Welcome to Unnecessary Roughness, Barcel's college football podcast brought to you by Casey. Why don't you – actually, Casey, are you well enough to tell him? Maybe Jack can tell him. Jack, why don't you tell him? The good news. Tell him the good news, Jack. So High Noon is the sponsor of this podcast. We love High Noon. And right before we started recording, there was a tweet put out by Dave Portnoy discussing his new pack, the Prez Pack. And in it is the new flavor we have been teasing for the past, I don't know, month or so. And what is it, Casey? Jack, it is the tangerine. The and tangerine been, flavor, and I can't wait to taste it. I can't wait to try it. Like I've been saying on every episode when we've been teasing it, the people who have tried it, Dave being one of them, obviously, but other people who have gotten a taste test it said that it is like it, the best flavor that they have, whether they like the peach the best, the grapefruit the best, like anybody who has tried it it has beaten out their top flavor. So it's not just like, oh, if you like peach, you're going to like tangerine. Apparently it is that delicious. And if you think about it, like if you get an orange drink correct, it is unbelievable. If you if it's incorrect, it's not good. But the high noon, they apparently did it correct. I cannot wait to try it. Tangerine, new flavor. Can't wait to have it. You can have your game day pack. You can have literally any high noon at any event. Probably not while uh, there's some events you don't bring them to. But most events you can. And you're going to enjoy them. This weekend, I'll be enjoying some high noon, hard seltzer, real vodka, real juice for real fans like you and I. All right. Two Casey Smith-related announcements. Number one, first announcement is Casey's a little under the weather today. She's at home. Um, a little feverish. How are you feeling, Casey? Not feeling great. Uh, anytime you have a fever, I feel like your whole body hurts. But you know what? It's okay. Got to power through. Got to get to Chicago today. So I'm not going to complain. Well, at least the baby's not crying. I think we can all agree with that. <laughs> if the baby was crying, it would be a problem. But at least that's not happening. Well, so. I can't promise it's not going to happen because it turns out when you get a fever, the baby gets a fever or vice versa. So he is also right here with a fever. And he's been talking a lot. So I cannot promise that he will not scream throughout this podcast. But he's happy. I'll take and that. Announcement number two. Happy birthday, Casey Smith. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. I was saying right before we started recording that if you would have told me a couple years ago that my birthday would consist of me being at home with a fever with an eight month old, also with a fever, I would have told you that you're back. But life comes at you fast. I appreciate it. Uh, wouldn't wouldn't want it any other way. Casey, the big. The big 4-0 is truly a milestone. Oh, fuck off. Congratulations. How does it feel? I don't know. It's I've got a, a few years left until I figure that one out. Okay. I know you, you don't look, a, you, you you don't look a day over 27. Wow. Oh, thank you, Jack. You're, you're a fantastic liar. I appreciate that. But, Brandon, once I turn 50, I'll ask you how that feels because I know that you understand that one. Wow. Brandon, Brandon's in his new studio. It looks great. Um, I think it's still kind of in progress, but once you yep. hang some things up, it's going to be phenomenal. It looks we, good. Uh, we, we, we just got shelving put in yesterday. Uh, we, we don't have anything for the shelves yet. And I'm actually in a corner, so we haven't figured out the angles or the lighting yet, but we're, we're getting there. And it's, It looks it's, like you're in a hell in a cell right now. I feel like I'm in a hell in a cell. Uh, the good part oh. is... The good part is for a couple of days, we couldn't figure out the thermostat, and it was hot as blazes in here, but now somebody <laughs> fixed our thermostat, so it's a cool 68 in here. Everything's good. All right. What's the dunce hat for? Uh, that was for Connor Griffin, who uh, who said Penn State was going to beat Ohio State, so he had to wear a dunce hat. What an idiot, huh? What, yeah. What, <laughs> a, what, a, what a moron. <laughs> Um, I'm excited to see the new studios. I think that this is the last week that we shoot the NFL show and the remote studio. And next week we're in college and pro in the new office. I'm very excited. So question, as we get ready for week nine of the college football season, it might be week eight, might be week 10. I really don't know. I lose track. Nine. But as we get ready for week nine, that's what I'm going to call it. Casey, do you get the sense that Michigan's underhanded ways and cheating has taken all the joy out of this college football season? I, I know that you feel that way. 
I mean, we're going to watch football teams. Um, we're going to watch football teams play on Saturday. Michigan's off, so God knows where Connor Stallions is going to be, uh, or all of his army. Um, but Jack, I just got to be honest that the the Michigan, the the depth and the sheer scale of the Michigan cheating scandal is threatening to overwhelm the sport in my eyes. So there's since we talked on Monday night. There's been more. There's been videos out, photos, whatnot. This is this is a a deep, deep operation. Uh, it seems as if he had multiple people working for him, multiple student assistants, whatnot, going to games. I also would not believe. I wouldn't be surprised if every single school does this. It seems like they do, and then on top of it. Can we please, for the love of God, just put our speakers in the helmets of the players? Uh, why can't we do this? Like, why do why do we still have to do the the little uh, boom, boom, boom? Uh, like, and then they they sometimes go like this, and then it looks kind of like you're uh, it's a little uh, sus, you know? It's a pause, but right. why are we still doing this? It's the same thing with, with the markers and the punts. It's what? Well, I want to go back to something you just said. You said there's pictures and video. The one video of him on the sideline at the Ohio State game, literally, I mean, yeah. literally, he's he's standing by the coaches, and, and, and Ohio State goes to Audible, and this motherfucker, like a prairie dog, goes. <laughs> it's a pass. It's a pass. It's a pass. I mean, you see him look across the field and, and realize what they're doing, and the entire sideline goes pass, pass, pass. I mean that pretty damning video. Uh, they scored a touchdown on that play, though. Pretty damning video. I mean, it's a damning <laughs> video, but I would like to see other sidelines. I, I I would assume when that happens, every sideline. I mean, Ryan Day was talking about, and we didn't realize it at the time, but I think it was during the the playoff. I think it was twenty twenty playoff. He said that they that Clemson has a Navy SEAL like operation over there stealing signs. So Clemson's doing it. Ryan Day definitely reported it. it it's just, it's very it, clear. Everybody's doing, doing it. It's everybody's doing it. Um, Jack, back to your thing about the microphones. I mean, what Matt rule said, which, you know, of course, like Matt rule, everyone's like, well, you know, he's kind of admitting that they're trying to steal signs, but it's like, he's saying what everybody's saying. It's like, we're, they're trying to get our signs. We're trying to get their signs. Yeah. The, re the reason that mics aren't in the helmets yet is because coaches want to be able to steal signs. Like that okay, is. Okay, so there. Oh, thank you. I didn't see that from rule. Now that makes sense. It's like union. It's like you know how I said the unions or the with the chain gang. The chain gang unions not letting anything else kind of take away their jobs. That's. I see what you're saying. Yeah, Matt Rule said it where it was like, and of course, you know, people aren't like talking about that near as much because it's like they don't want to admit that an opposing coach in the same conference is is saying what everybody's saying. I mean, like Dion's went viral and he was like, well, you can mail him the playbook. It doesn't matter. You still have to stop it. But the microphone in the helmets has been voted down over and over and over. Apparently, I didn't know that either until I saw that press conference. And he, and he was like, well, why? Because everybody's trying to steal everybody's signs. So it's interesting that like outside of Ohio State, and then, you know, people like Brandon who are like devastated because college football is dying, like all the head other head coaches are being like, Yeah, like obviously. Now again, it makes Michigan look stupid because they got caught. That's pretty da pretty damning video. <laughs> I I think the video <laughs> just put some speakers in the helmets, tell the players what, what to do. I mean, I guess Yeah, they score a touchdown on that play. But you're right, he does look over there and it's going to be very hard to say, oh, why is the staff that you pay $55,000 a year attached at the hip of your offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator? Pretty damning video. Also, I'm going to be honest. He's going to die on this hill, Jack. He's I get it. it. I get it that all of these signs, they're college kids, whatnot. They may not be the most, I'm not going to say they're dumb, but they're not the honor roll students. You don't have all honor roll students. Why don't you just change your signs? That like I, all jokes aside and all everything aside from like whether it was Michigan, Ohio State, USC, Oklahoma, Texas, A&M, Miami. I don't care. Why are the signs so easily stolen? 
if they're so easily stolen from the stands that like, regardless of if Connor Stallion was there or not, that if Brandon Walker was sitting in the, the opposing stands and could see the sideline and he could figure out what the calls are, why are they so easily stolen? All right. All right. All right. I'm stepping in. Oh, okay. No. I'm stepping in. <laughs> we're victim blaming at this point. We're saying they deserved it. We're saying they got what they oh, were asking up. for. Is that what we're saying? No. Uh, yes. Michigan, Michigan was 49 and 22 under this man's first seven years. Something changed. Something went different. They hired a guy in 2021, and all of a sudden, they are one of the best teams in college football. And we can go back and we can point to, hey, they hired this guy at that point, immediately got better. If cheating didn't work, people wouldn't cheat, okay? Cheating works. It worked in baseball. It works in pro football. It works in college football. And Michigan had a very, I mean, it was a sophisticated system where this guy appears to be buying tickets all over the country, sending people, and he is the conduit. He's bringing the information in, and he's relaying it to the coaches. Like, cheating is happening. We have evidence of this cheating, and if it didn't work, I don't know that they would be 33-3 and three over the last three years. So, so to just simplify it and say, oh, everybody does it. Why don't they change their signals? Why don't we step in and say, hey, guys, let, maybe not, let's not cheat as much. Because well, who's going to listen? You're trying to tell me that if, if never in the history of college football or sports in general, that if somebody come out and was like, hey, everybody, let's just not cheat, that that would stop happening? They, don't, you, don't, you think the, don't you guys think the record – Free cheating and post cheating is very interesting. Yeah, but you're also there's a little bit of revisionist history there. Like it was, you're making it seem as if this Michigan team was this disgusting three and nine. They they almost made the college football playoff one year, then they had some down years and they turned it around. And who has led them turning around the most? Great players like Aiden Hutchinson, who went to the NFL and is just as good. Great quarterback, J.J. McCarthy. And I know that's up for debate, but that continues on. I've, I got, I've, I'm have I've, getting messages from players that were at Mac schools that tell have been telling me, this is Mac schools, lowest of the low, no disrespect, that they go, when these players get injured, the coaches say, hey, I know you're injured. We have an away game. Can you go to Western Michigan to watch their game and steal their signs for us because we're playing them in three weeks? Like, you think they're not doing this at a massive level at every school? It's not Michigan who's the first one who's ever thought of it. I'm not saying that's not be that's not – you shouldn't sanction them. But the holier than now, like, oh, my, I'm, and I'm not coming at you, Brent. I'm just saying in general, the Ohio State, Michigan State fans, it's like, ah, oh, give me a fucking break. You guys do it, but you guys just don't have the talent. You guys don't – aren't. Well, Ohio State's different, but Michigan State, you're still in science. You guys just suck. I just don't understand how it like I, again we talked about the Astros and like the you know if if you're stealing pitch count like if you if you can look at at whatever the pitch is and you can see it with your own eyeballs and you can figure that out okay this is the specific pitch that's coming with that sign I don't understand why that's quote stealing signs it's just being smart now the buzzers allegedly that's a different level so if we're talking about a very illegal things that Michigan is doing and other schools aren't doing fine but I don't think that's what we're talking about. Well, I like to believe in integrity. I like to believe in morals. I like to believe in something. I like to believe that out there, there are teams like Ohio State and Mississippi State that are doing things the right way, that are not cheating their opponents, that are not cheating the game. I like to think that somewhere in this great world of ours, there is good, and that's clearly not in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And the fact that you guys – are, are stumping for it and you guys are going to bat for it. It just says so much about your character and who you are. And, Katie, I just want to applaud you for not weighing in on their side because you and I are clearly the two most good people on this podcast. Honorable. <laughs> you Honorable. Thank you. Thank you. I came up with the word good. <laughs> I just Great, like, I have, oh. oh, sorry, Katie. Go ahead. He's doing this for Michigan. Imagine what Brandon would be like if this was Old Miss getting caught. Oh my God! No, I, I, I want to go. I want to go another step further because, <laughs> I mean, this is just going to happen. But what do you think Michigan fans would be doing if they found out the last ten years of Ohio State dominance, Ohio State was doing this? Well, oh. exact same thing were happening. Ohio State Correct. fans were doing it. You think Dave Portnoy would be pro cheating? You think it'd be no, 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 no? Uh, they'd be freaking out. 
that's why I said it doesn't matter what team it is. The rivals, like, they should jump all over it. I said, like, if, if you're Ohio State, if you're Michigan State, if you are just somebody that wants to hate Michigan, you should make fun of it because they got caught doing it. However, if the roles were reversed, then the other teams could do the same thing. That That's just the way college football works. I mean, sports in general, that works. If it's your team that's doing it and winning, then you have no problem with it. If it's the rival team that's been beating you, you have a problem with it. So it's hypocritical, sure, but that's what sports are. But Brandon, I, you know, again, we talk in hypotheticals a lot here. We talk, you know, we have to say allegedly a lot. Let's say hypothetically, Ole Miss did get caught doing this. You don't, have to be really hypothetic- you don't have to be hypothetical about Ole Miss cheating, Casey. See, everybody cheats. You don't have to be hypothetical about that. We have evidence of that. But I'm saying, like, in general, everybody cheats. And I, I said it on Twitter. I think I even might have said it on Monday night. Unless it's a super, super illegal thing where they can vacate wins, the death penalty, all those things. I wish A&M was better at stealing signs. I wish A&M could, could figure out teams the way that uh, allegedly Jim Harbaugh has. And I know you would feel the same way about Mississippi State. If Mississippi State was on top of the sport right now and somebody was like, well, we've been sending this guy Brandon Walker at all these games and he's been sending the videos in, you'd be like, hell yeah, I have. I'm good at stealing signs. I'm good at scouting the other team. Everybody cheats sometimes. But you are 100% correct. Every team would jump on their rival doing this. It's easy when you're not the team getting accused of it. Of course. Okay. Uh, we can just start to get to the slate a little bit. Uh, Katie, any any more news I need to talk about? I don't really think there's a whole lot going on other than Michigan and a couple other things. No, it expanded that it's not just Big Ten schools, so it seems like Georgia, Tennessee, and Clemson are in it. But then um, Army is invited to the AAC next year. But Yeah, not much. The American and American Conference. I do want to give Brandon some flowers, as we always do. The TCU tweet was very funny. Where yeah. you're like, well, they should have bought tickets to TCU then. Like that was that was good. I mean, again, there's there's evidence that uh, when they didn't have advance notice, they were playing a team. They didn't play that team quite as well. Like that. No, that, they. But they did. I think they did scout TCU. Georgia. They might. Uh, they they advance scout them like they sent the guy. Yeah, I think there there's more evidence coming out that they uh, they went to Big T as a theory that. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> that the reason South Carolina was so good against Clemson and yeah. Tennessee last year was because Michigan scouted both of them and then sent their signs to South Carolina. But why would Michigan? I don't know. That, but that's alliance? a that's a fantastic rumor. I, I don't even care if it's true or not. That's that's. I a would, if you see Big T today, ask him about it. I, I will. Think the biggest thing for this is just. The jokes write themselves. Like it's such a minute thing, but it's just funny. It's just funny thing to troll people with. Like I put out a tweet. It's like every school in the country should make a play call board with Connor Stallions' face on it. Like that's just a funny opportunity. People are like, also this guy Connor Stallions. I completely agree. Is grew up. It appears the biggest Michigan fan in the world. He was the David Solfro. Michigan man from Barstool Idol to a T. He went to Navy. He was in the Marines. And then, but his dream in life forever has been to help Michigan football. That's only going to help them in terms of what they're just going to say, oh, this guy who he w- he would do anything to advance his career. I guess he was always kind of, uh, you know, one of the hardos in class and whatnot. And on top of it, They'll just say, hey, look at this guy. He was this massive Michigan fan. He worked alone. And then our coaches were like, oh, you, you just, you're, you're, we ask him more questions. We just, he just happened to, you know, be really good at looking at the signs. He, he, he figured it out during the game. It said it in his LinkedIn. All right. This Saturday, um, you know, next Saturday, you have marquee matchups. You have LSU, Bama. You have Bedlam. You have uh, USC, Washington. Next Saturday is just kind of a, another one of those loaded Saturdays. This is another one of those bridge Saturdays where you don't really have the marquee of the marquee matchups, but you have a lot of games that could prove just as vital to uh, to this season and figuring out things. You know, there's Georgia, Florida. You've got Oregon and Utah. You've got Duke, Louisville, and the ACC. 
Texas BYU as they go into war with a backup quarterback. Oklahoma is at Kansas as they begin a two-week stretch of teams. I think they can at least make them sweat a little bit. Uh, so I guess we start, and I don't know that we'll spend a whole lot of time on any of these games because, again, they're not as marquee as as the as maybe last week or next week. But going to uh, Jacksonville, where Georgia will meet Florida. I think, you know, coming into the season, I certainly had um, a view of Florida that was dim. I don't really believe much in Billy Napier, and I'm not going to change that much now. I'm not going to just get on the bandwagon. But it cannot be argued. They are 5-2. and two. Georgia will be playing its first game without Brock Bowers, and they'll be, uh, they'll be trying to figure that out. And it is obviously a rivalry game. 14 and a half point spread, but is there a thought, Casey, that Florida can can make Georgia really earn this or really, really, really take them to the limit? You're muted. Oop, still mute. You're muted. See, I was trying to be proactive so that I you wouldn't hear my son screaming. Um, I think that they can keep it close for a little bit, and I it's not because I have more faith in Florida, more so than it's. This rivalry game is always very weird. And anytime you have two fan bases that hate each other, two teams that hate each other, like, you know that weird things can happen. However, you know, and I know Florida fans, whether they want to admit it or not, like, they are not where they thought that they would be at this point. They've not been awful. They've not been god-awful, but they've not been good. And I think that Georgia is just a much better football team. I don't think that that's some hot take. That's a very obvious statement. So I think that it'll be maybe close for a half. Then I think Georgia chokes them out in the second half because we've seen Georgia have that ability to, to hit that switch. And why wouldn't they hit that switch in Jacksonville? Why wouldn't Kirby Smart go into the locker room and say, why, why are we dicking around with these guys? Like, just put the pedal to the metal and go. And Georgia's just a better football team, period. Yeah, I think Florida can uh, stay in this to the end. I, I think this can really? be a – yeah, I think this can be a close game. I, I get a sense um, a lot like the Auburn game where Georgia's very, very comfortable at home with this young quarterback, and especially without Brock Bowers, they're very, very comfortable at home. But when they get out of their comfort zone, and this is out of their comfort zone. I know it's a neutral site, but it's still out of their comfort zone. Um, and Napier is doing a pretty good job this year. They're 5-2. and two. I don't know how good they are or how, how – I don't know what the high-end ceiling of this team really is, but I don't know what the high-end ceiling of Georgia is either. Um, I, I think – uh, Georgia, the way they play this year, lends itself to close games. I think this is a game in the fourth quarter. I think it's a um, seven-point game. If Florida won, it wouldn't just shock me. It just wouldn't knock me over. But I expect Georgia to win. Um, now, one, one It wouldn't thing, shock you if Florida won? No, it wouldn't shock me. Really? I don't know. I think I'm at the point with Georgia where it wouldn't shock me if they lose any of these games. Like, they're, they're, they're good. They're still a very good team. They're one of the best teams in the country. But they're not the – swing and dick juggernaut they've been the last two years and um at some point they're going to lose a game to somebody teams lose games like it's very hard to go undefeated and i think they're doing it right now even though they're probably not again they're not nearly as good as they've been the last two years here's the the you know we've seen glimpses of them been able to do what they did now granted south carolina is not good we know that but like what they did in the second half they show glimpses of being that team they've been but here's the bigger thing for me it's not necessarily georgia like do you believe graham mertz can beat Georgia's defense. And I don't, like, I just don't have confidence in that. Now, Graham Mertz has played well in in different scenarios, and I'm not trying to say that he's a bad quarterback, but if I'm sitting here right now looking forward to Saturday and you said Graham Mertz beat Georgia, I would would be shocked. That would be something that I would not believe can happen. The only thing is Graham Mertz is way, way, way better than any quarterback Auburn can put on the field, be it Robbie Ashford, be it Peyton Thorne, Ray Mertz is better than those guys, and Georgia, I don't want to use the word lucky, but they were fortunate to get out of there with a seven-point victory. They got out of there with a win, and they were taken to the limit by bad quarterbacks at Auburn. And if it happened there, because I do think Florida is a much better team at every other position than Auburn is, if Auburn did it, I think Florida can do it. Yeah, no, I mean, that that's a very good point. I think it's it's just – Auburn Auburn is weird, though. I, I just – I can't imagine – sitting here on Saturday night or wherever we're going to be Saturday night and being like, yep, Graham Mertz in Florida was the team that took Georgia down. But I could be very, very wrong. Let's also be fair to Graham Mertz a little bit. Graham Mertz has not just come in there. He hasn't thrown a Heisman season at you. But I'm just looking at what he's got. He's completing 76% of his passes. He's got 2,000 yards, 12 touchdowns, two interceptions. He is he is playing good football. and he yeah, was, he's not he was, awful. He was terrific in their last game when they beat South Carolina. Um, he threw for over 400 yards. Like 
he has not played bad this season. Do I think he's as good as Carson Beck is going to be in his career? Probably not. But, again, if Auburn and Robbie Ashford and Peyton Thorne could give Georgia everything they wanted, I got to believe that, that Graham Mertz can too. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to slander him. Like I think he's some awful quarterback. It's just maybe it's the the taste just of saying Graham Mertz could beat Georgia. But you're right. Georgia doesn't look like they have, have in the past. Um, but I still think that they are one of the best teams in the country. And I just don't see them losing to Florida. Jack, what do you think? Graham Mertz has been really good. He also is dating like Miss America. Uh, <laughs> Only Jack is... would know that. <laughs> oh no, she's a smoke blonde, right? Yeah, she she's. Is. She's not even just like a smoke show. She's like a like supermodel. But good for him. On top of that, it's – I mean, I agree with Brandon. Florida's pretty good. They have the talent. I really am firm on George is going to win this game. But Florida winning wouldn't be the most shocking thing. Brandon's so right. That's one about just winning. It's so hard to win. And you have to do that every week. And – Losing Brock Bowers is going to hurt a little bit. This is the first game we're seeing Carson Beck without Brock Bowers. It's a neutral site. Florida matches up pretty well with Georgia. Georgia also matches up well with Florida. Florida's been pretty bad on third downs, which may be the big uh, aspect here. And Georgia's defense has been really, really good on third down. So that may be the big issue. Graham Mertz just can't turn the ball over. He has to have the best game of his life. But he's going to – I think he has the chance to do it. And – Florida's probably feeling really confident coming in this game. That being said, Graham Mertz tore up South Carolina's defense. Yeah. And uh, we saw him against Utah. That was the first game, though. South Carolina's defense. I mean, Will Rogers this year tore it up. Nothing against Will Rogers and Mississippi State this year. It's just. Sure, it seems like there was. What made you turn your tune with Florida? Because early in the year, you shot all over Florida, Billy Napier. What What have you seen that makes still, you. I mean, I still don't think he's a very good coach, but I, again. This is less about Florida and more about Georgia. The only other time they went on the road and played a difficult game, a, a quasi-difficult game, they almost lost to Auburn. Like, they beat Auburn 27-20. to 20. In, this, in this stadium against Florida, it's going to be tough. Um, Florida is 5-2. and two. Like, they, they, they beat Tennessee at home. They've shown the ability. They were embarrassing that first night against Utah. But other than that, they've been a pretty good team this year. So while I don't think he's a long-term answer, I don't think Billy Napier is a great coach. You got to look at what they've done this year and give them some flowers for that. Now, could they finish six and six? Yeah, they could also finish six and six after starting five and two. So um, don't let me get to lying about them. Now I uh, will go quickly over the rest of them: Texas, BYU, Malik Murphy, or Arch Manning. Uh, I guess probably Malik Murphy, right? But uh, I, I think Stark has kind of intimated that Arch Manning could see some time this week. That would be very interesting. We don't really know how long Quinn Ewers is out. And maybe it doesn't matter against BYU, but if we're talking about Texas getting back and beating Oklahoma, I think Quinn Ewers is a must for that to happen. I've seen I one three agree. to four weeks, but that was not official. Like from any official source, they just say indefinite timeline. Some random fan accounts have said three to four. Now, uh, the most interesting game here on the schedule for me is, is number eight, Oregon, and number 15, Utah, or number 13, Utah, excuse me. Utah just makes a living wrecking the Pac-12 playoff hopes. They just love to just fuck shit up. They love to just absolutely destroy it. They just took USC out for good last week. Now they can take Oregon out for good this week. And frankly, Oregon has kind of a history of getting right to the edge of playoff contention and then losing uh, losing and falling out. Sometimes they lose to teams that, that are way worse than them. This is not a team that's way worse than them. At the same time, Oregon's really good and Utah's – doing all this with a backup quarterback. I don't know which way I go with this one, but it's fascinating because I, I realized yesterday I went to re-rank my top 10 coaches in the country for right now. Outside of Kirby and Saban, I think Kyle Whittingham might be the number three coach in the country. This is going to be a really you difficult game for Utah. Their they offense keep, stinks. They can't, they can't move the ball. You know, you say that, Jack. You say that, Jack. They scored 34 against USC. Now, USC's defense markedly worse than than Oregon. I will grant yeah. you that. Um, but they did show the ability to move the ball in that game. I don't think Oregon's defense is like I mean, they're not the 85 Bears out there. I, I think they're pretty good. They're pretty that often, their defense, is, that pretty defense good. is pretty good. They're 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 you know but, but going into good. going into the Washington game, they were leading the Pac-12 in defense, weren't they? They still they're. 
They're still very good on defense, at least in my opinion. I mean, I, I'm not saying – Brandon's right. They're not the greatest defense that's ever walked the earth. But Utah's offense, you're right. They they put together some things against USC, and they, they've scored some points against – I mean, they didn't really score against UCLA. Um, they didn't really score. Who did uh, Utah lose to? Go, it, it, no offense to – I mean, well, actually, all offense to USC. Like, comparing USC's defense to Oregon's defense is – I mean, we can't. Like, Utah, with a backup quarterback, could do anything they wanted against USC's defense, who Utah almost lost, lost to Oregon State. Colorado. Yeah. They just really struggle moving the ball, but their defense is elite. I mean, uh, this is a this is a big test for, for Bo Nix in that offense. Again, Bucky Irving, whatnot. Their Brandon, defense has a- not been phenomenal against the rush, which is something that Bucky Irving and Oregon can expose. So I, I, I think Oregon takes care of business and keeps it rolling with what's going to be a potential rematch against Washington, the Pac-12 championship. Does the, I think it's 19 home game win streak for Utah come into effect? I think this could be, or could this be the end of it? I, I still think believe it could in Utah. Be, but it's a good stat. I mean, they're, they are very hard to beat at home, and it's the OG, tricky, tough conversation that we had on the college football show in 2019. Like, Utah is very, very tough to play at home. What? Is that Brandon? Yeah, he's yeah. keep going. Oh, okay. Um, so I think that, that that does play into it, Katie. You're a thousand percent correct. I just – I just think that this Oregon team is so much better and maybe it's wishful thinking because I want Oregon and Washington to play again. Like that game was epic. That game was amazing. We saw two of the top quarterbacks in the country. I want to see it happen again, but Brandon is a thousand percent correct. Utah has made a living in the last few years of really shuffling and messing up teams to go to the college football playoff. I mean, not even just this year, look what happened last year They're They are the reason that USC did not make it into the playoff, which, you know, probably saved us from watching a blowout in the playoff with USC. However, like Utah is good at that, but having a backup quarterback, knowing how good Oregon's defense is and Oregon's defense, you know, I know we can't play college football math all the time, but if Oregon's defense kept them in the game against Michael Penix Jr., like I'm not, I like, I just don't think there's anything that Utah can roll out offensively that's going to look anything like what Washington has on offense. So I guess we'll see, but I, I do think that it's wishful thinking for me. I just want Oregon to win this game because I want a rematch. I gave up 36 points and 400 yards to Michael Penix. Like I, I, I think they did. Oh, I mean, they're I, I, again. I think they're a pretty good defense. I don't think they're great. They're. I'm just looking at their numbers. They're 16th in scoring defense. That's pretty good, especially for a Pac-12 team. They're 56 in pass defense. Run defense is pretty good. So I think they're a good defense. I don't think they're a defense that makes you go, "Oh my God, how are we ever going to move the ball?" And no. I know it's a backup quarterback, but goddamn, Kyle Whittingham and that staff know how to know how to push the right buttons. They do, and he and I don't know if I would put him at the third the third coach in the country, but I definitely think he's top ten right now. I I also just I think Dan Lanning is in that conversation. Like Dan Lanning should be high up. Do we ever think we'll see <laughs> Kyle Whittingham somewhere else? I feel like no. he's like set with Utah. No, but the like, thing is, he's old Kyle too. Whittingham. Kyle Whittingham made Utah a perennial top ten to twelve team. Utah, Utah, that's what he has done. Like he is incredible. He's an incredible football coach. Um, all right, y'all just want to go to the categories, and that way we can talk about every game that we need to talk about when we bring up the yeah, categories. Yeah, but in yes. Utah, there it's going to be a nice, nice day, and mm-hmm. you may as well, if you're going to this game, you may want to wear something that keeps you warm but it's light, doesn't make you too hot, and that's why we would suggest what Brandon's wearing right now, Roback. You talking about this good-looking hoodie right here? Yes. The best that. way to describe Roback, best fit, best feel. They got the best quarter zips. They got the best hoodies. They got the best joggers. They got the best everything, performance polos. You name it. If you can put it on your body, they got it, and it is very, very comfortable. The quality is top-notch. They have unofficially become the official game, t- game day attire of Barstool Sports. If you're a football fan, you wear Roback. It is that simple. And like I, I mean, I have this hoodie in every single color. It is, uh, it is warm. It is cool. It is both at the same time. I don't know how it knows, but on a warm day, I can wear this and be fine. On a cold day, I can wear this and be fine. It is that kind of hoodie, and it's just remarkably comfortable. 
Yeah, I have a whole drawer of those hoodies because we obviously wear them on the college football show. And it's so funny to look and see, like, I've worn it at Nebraska when it was a thousand degrees and I'll be wearing it in Madison, Wisconsin this weekend when it's going to be like zero degrees. So it, it works across the board. And those joggers, I know we talked about them before. I wear them all the time. They are so comfortable and they're very flattering. Just saying they make that butt pop. <laughs> Just saying. All right. All right. Use code <laughs> rough to make your butt pop. Use code rough on roback.com. For 20% off your first purchase through the end of the week, that's R-H-O-B-A-C-K-A.com. Use code ROUGH for 20% off all polos, Q-zips, hoodies, and shorts. Code ROUGH. Make sure to check them out now, and you'll be ready for the rest of this season. All right. Casey Smith. Yes, sir. If you could go anywhere in this country, where would you go this weekend? I would go to Utah. And we've already talked about the game, but I think this Oregon-Utah game. I also, I think, you know, Katie, Katie bringing up the, the home streak is great. I just think that this... When you look at the Pac-12 this year, and, and again, the same story, you talk about the fact that the Pac-12 is dying after this year. It's not going to look the same uh, going to this game and knowing that Kyle Whittingham could potentially, you know, fuck up a path for Oregon would be very, very cool. But since we've already talked about that game, then I would say, I mean, we're going to this game, but, you know, Ohio State, Wisconsin, I know Ohio State is a much better team. I know that Wisconsin, you know, with Luke Fickle, they're going to be good. They're not there yet. They've got to figure things out. But, like, you want to talk about something that just wouldn't be surprising. Like, what night game at Camp Randall, Ohio State, very high right now, just coming off of the win against Penn State. You know, there's all this Michigan stuff is going on. Would it surprise me if this game is close in the fourth quarter? Absolutely not. Like, Luke Fickle is the guy that, you know, you can't ever count out, regardless of what the rest of their season has looked like. And Ohio State's defense is very good, but that offense, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr. looked phenomenal last week, but could it be a letdown spot for them on the road at night? That would not shock me whatsoever. I'm happy we're going to be there. Yeah, it's interesting, and I also think Wisconsin found their quarterback last week, uh, Braden right. Locke, who had to play, uh, led the big comeback. I think he's going to be very good up there. Um, transfer from Mississippi State, that's where winners come from. Um, Mike it, Leach's last recruit. It is, I believe so. I have to check. I still haven't checked. Um, so, Ohio State's very interesting right now in that um, you know they they went on the road to Indiana. They won twenty three to three. They they look kind of underwhelming. And last week they had to get up for Penn State. Now they do go on the road. I, I think this is a tremendous letdown spot. I also wonder uh, all these three teams: Michigan, Penn State, and Ohio State. When they play somebody who is decent but not in those three teams. How how up do they get for them? And we'll see this Saturday night. I think it's a terrific spot for Wisconsin. I don't think Wisconsin's all that good this year. I think it's going to take him a year to really get the talent in there that he wants. Uh, but that's a good one, too. That's a good one. Jack, if you could go anywhere in this country, where would you go this weekend? I would be going to Georgia, Florida. Nice little matchup. Both fan bases. Lar our world's largest outdoor cocktail party. Yep. I'm going to be having some fun. Frat Beach, I, I'm probably too old to go to that, but Frat Beach down there. I think the game's going to be phenomenal, too. There's something special about those two jerseys. I can't wait to watch it, and if I could go, I would be there no matter what. And I'm interested to see both Graham Mertz and Carson Beck. Graham Mertz seems like he's turning it around. Carson Beck, first game without Brock Bowers. Who are they going to get the ball to? We'll see who who's going to be the weapon for them and how good is that defense? It's going to be a good game. It's a it's a real test for for Georgia, who we do think may be the best team, or we do think right now is the best team in the country. Maybe outside Michigan, actually, I would say is the best team in the country now. But well, I could I, I can in good conscience agree with that. Um, walk, yeah, I knew that was going to happen. Uh, Jack, I agree with you. I think Michigan's the best team in the country. Brandon does too, but he just won't admit it. No, uh, no, 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 no. But I was making a joke there. I do not believe Michigan's the best. You team. You think Ohio State's better? I I think Georgia could be better. I think I am not. Listen, you guys, I understand why people say it. They have destroyed every team they played. They haven't played a, a college football team yet. When they play a college football team, I'll pass judgment on Michigan. I'm not going to crown them the best when they don't have to play the same sport as everybody else. That's all. That's what I'm saying about Michigan. I feel like Katie could take what you just said, like copy and paste into every episode, and we would it would like you've said it every episode, and you you are standing by it, which I respect. But back to Georgia, Florida, Brandon. I know you've been there. Uh, I don't. How many games? How many times have you been in that rivalry? 
Oh, I have I I've never been to that game. I thought you had. I've never been to that game. No. Oh, I know we oh, I guess in 2018. I, for some reason I thought you have. I've been to I think three or four um mm -hmm. when I was working for the other TV network I was working for. You want to talk about some sightseeing? Like yeah. the game outside of the game itself. And like a lot of times when there's neutral site games, like people complain because it's like, well, we want to see a home at home. This neutral site game in Jacksonville is awesome because the like when they say they're partying like they are partying like at, yeah. no fail on saturday night we will have some sort of gifts memes videos of drunk people outside of the stadium college kids acting a fool like this game is like one of the best sightseeing games you have in college football and then usually the game's pretty good on the field sometimes it's not but like that that is a spectacle so jack that is a very good a very good pick, and it is definitely a bucket list game, regardless if you like the SEC or not. I would highly, highly recommend going to that game. Yeah, I've been to many. I've been to Florida games. I've been to Georgia games. I've never been to a Georgia Florida game. It's great. Uh, uh, Katie, if you could go anywhere in the country, where would you go? Also going to Georgia, Florida. Basically, everything Casey just said, I equate it a lot to like Red River Shootout. It's just one of those bucket list games. You just got to go see it. And if everything I've heard about the partying and the tailgating is true. Just overall great environment. All right. Brandon, if you could go to any game in the country, where would you go? Well, you guys can have your, your big conference teams and everything. Uh, He's going to say JMU again. I, I, I have often said it gets no better than late October in Fresno, California. And and I, I truly believe that if if, if – if it gets better than Fresno, California on a late October night, I don't even want it. You got seven and one UNLV at seven and one Fresno. What more could a college football fan want? That's two terrific teams having a terrific year. Beautiful part of California. The weather, the scenery, the girls. Oh my goodness. Give me seven and one UNLV at seven and one Fresno. But you guys can do the power five stuff. That's fine. You you've been doing this the last few weeks, and I, I appreciate that but like where would you actually really want to go i'd want to go to 701 fresno hosting 701 unlv but you've never been to a georgia florida game i'm sorry no. I, there's too just much sun on? there you guys just gonna hate on fresno no no I, it not, i'm not taking anything away from that how That's many big... times casey have i been on the back of that bus on the college football show and said there's no place in late october like fresno goose egg Exactly. 100 times. I'll hold up the one and the zero, and you hold up the zero. All right. <laughs> uh, under the radar games. Under the radar games. That's what we'll do right now. I've got – no, I'm going to go first on upset alert because I don't want anybody to steal my upset alert. So, under the radar games, Jack will go first. Under the radar? Can you – I – Memphis and North Texas should be uh, actually no. How about uh seven and one UNLV Louisville. seven and one Fresno? Duke Louisville should be a good game. Uh the ACC with so many one team loss or with so many losses we saw on the Monday night show that one of our fans was asking maybe Virginia Tech can get back in it. Can Louisville right the ship? Um it's at home against Duke. Duke obviously I don't I don't know if Riley Leonard's playing, but Louisville obviously took a tough loss against Pittsburgh, but also uh, I think Louisville's a nice little fan base, and it would be fun to uh, kind of see them continue to go on the right path with their hometown boy, Jeff Brom. Yeah, Duke has only lost on the road to Florida State and at home to Notre Dame. Uh, Duke is still really good. I would assume Riley Leonard's playing like I, I feel like he could have gone in that game the other night but maybe I'm just wrong I don't I, I don't know I haven't really paid attention to the Riley Leonard status so uh Casey you're under the radar game um I I have a couple on here so Houston Kansas State which I feel like is a crazy thing to say but he, like Kansas State you know they they moved on from Will Howard it looks like for good I you know they've gotten better you know outside of Oklahoma and Texas in the Big 12 you know, we're still trying to wait to see who that team's going to be, whether you think it's going to be Oklahoma State, Kansas State. But Houston got jobbed last Saturday. They really did. And I, you know, regardless, Texas got the win. That's all fine and good. But when you really look back at what happened against Texas, Houston got, like, just absolutely screwed by the refs. That game, to me, is, is interesting. I want to see exactly how good Kansas State's going to look. And Houston, you know, they've not been great. Um, and then, Brandon, like, your game against Auburn, because – 
I know that like you might roll your eyes, but Mississippi State Auburn is interesting to me. Well, two years ago, the last time we were there, we were down twenty eight to three. And it was the damnedest comeback I've ever seen because we went from twenty eight to three to leading forty three to twenty eight in like twelve minutes. Mm-hmm. It was, uh, but that was a Mike Leach team, and this is not. So we'll we'll see. But last I, year- I, Auburn, you know, Auburn, they, they got to find their quarterback. We know Hugh Freeze has got to get you know a better quarterback for his system. But like I like, I think that you guys win this game. Am I crazy? Just relax, man. Just relax. Am I crazy? Just relax, bitch. Just just relax. <laughs> chill out. Chill out. Chill out. Um, Katie, you're under the radar game. It's not under the radar for this podcast, but for the national scale, I think Texas A&M, South Carolina, because what are the odds that the loser of that seals his fate? I think more. it's more likely if, if the loser is Jimbo. I, I don't know how close Carolina is to firing Beamer. I do know, hell, I, I believe the money's already lined up to fire Jimbo. I don't know if they'll pull the trigger, but Jimbo could also, with the schedule he's got left, Casey, I think he can save his bacon over the next few weeks. Brandon, Katie, Jack, I know what I'm about to say is a loser mentality, and I'm okay with admitting that. You're about to say I you want to lose. I want to lose this game. Because if this man can somehow string together a couple wins and go eight and four, maybe even seven and five, which is which is not acceptable, but it is because AM has not had some national breaking record over the last few years if he wins this game and continues to string together some wins where he should i don't see how they fire him now i wish they would but i think if he loses i've already got a thing planned if they lose this game against south carolina and he's not fired by sunday i'm not even gonna go after jimbo anymore i've got a list of names that i'm ready to go after and that's what i'm hoping for i don't think it's gonna happen i think AM is gonna win and piss me off even more but i want him to lose this game it's a jake malisek Oh, he's like, I hope we lose to UNC so we can fire Tony Elliott. Yeah, and do you know how sad it is, Katie? Do you know how sad it is that you can compare Virginia football to Texas A&M football? But you can. And All more right. the malice of like wanting to lose, but yes, I, I get. But that's it. what I'm saying. It's like, like I know under, I understand A&M hasn't won a national title since the 30s. I get that, and everybody's like, "Well, A&M's always mediocre." Okay, well, A&M's also paying a coach over 90 million dollars to suck. So. All right, my under-the-radar game happens in Lawrence, Kansas, where Oklahoma uh, just barely beat UCF last week. They're still on the high of beating Texas three weeks ago. Kansas is a live dog, I think. I don't know if Oklahoma will lose that game. I would lean that they won't lose that game. However, again, Kansas is a live dog. Kansas can score the football. And Oklahoma's defense, I'm not convinced it's all it's, it's nearly as good as we think it is. I think this is a high-scoring game. I think Kansas puts a test to them. This is a two-week stretch that's very, very, very key for Oklahoma. Beating Texas was the the first step towards becoming nationally big again, but they have a two-week stretch at Kansas and at Oklahoma State, who is back on their feet. It's going to be a very interesting two weeks for Oklahoma. That's my under the radar game. Before I get well, just to, to, to just to add to that, I know we're going to talk about probably an advertiser before, but that's yeah. also my upset alert game. So do what you need to do, and then we'll we'll move into that. Cars.com. Cars.com is a leading digital marketplace, connects car shoppers with their perfect car, celebrating 25 years of helping shoppers research, find inventory, finance, and sell cars. Wherever life takes you next, whoever you're looking to be, there's a car for that on Cars.com. they got up to 50,000 cars added daily to Cars.com. Shop over 2 million cars for 2 million possibilities. Find your next possibility on Cars.com. Where to next? Cars.com. Casey, we all need a car, don't we? We all need a car. And like I said, the, it was, this past week or so, I've actually been car shopping for potential cars for the holidays. So cars.com, shout out, letting me internet window shop for a potential you're, gift. You're, you're buying a car just for the holidays? Boy, that's a rich people shit. Oh, my God. That's he, rich. He, he did that for his wife, like, last year. So he's, he's just It wasn't a holiday. To... That was Mother's Day. That's a holiday. Like, same. That's even... Katie, he he's trolling right now. He knows that's even a richer move. I saw the smirk. Yeah, of course he's it. Um, so upset alert, Brandon. You've I'm already going said first. This. I'm going first. I already said mine. But I'm going first. Okay, go first then. You can repeat yours in a minute. I'm going first because <laughs> okay. Katie always takes my upset alert, so I'm taking it. Oh, okay, I'm showing. I have mine written down. I'm showing it to Jack, in case you say it. Say okay. yours. I'm gonna say mine. 
Number 11, Oregon State on the road at Arizona. Arizona, who I called to be good earlier this year to, at the beginning of the season. Arizona, my surprise team in the Pac-12. Arizona is good. Arizona is a good football team. They're 4-3. and three. They lost an overtime game to USC. They lost an overtime game on the road to Mississippi State, and they lost to a third team, Washington, by seven points. They're good. Oregon State is also very, very good, but they're on the road. I love Arizona right here. Arizona to beat Oregon State. That's my upset alert. Is that yours, Katie? No, mine was Oregon. So he, I thought for a second it's or, uh, Utah over Oregon. Jack, what's yours? I think Texas has to be careful against BYU. Uh, obviously, new quarterback, whatnot. BYU hasn't played awful this year. I don't, I don't think they're a very good team, but you know, Texas didn't look great against Houston last week. New quarterback, BYU always. I mean, I think BYU beat Texas the last time they played. They this is a game that's happened over the past few years or past decade or so. Obviously, now it's a Big Twelve game for one year and one year only. But yeah, I think they they need to be careful. All right, Casey. Now you can talk about yours. Well, you've already talked about it, but uh, I don't think that Oklahoma loses this game. But I do think that they are on upset watch. Uh, you know, Kansas hasn't looked horrible. They they did get killed by Texas, and I get that. And obviously, football math. You know, Oklahoma beat Texas, whatever. Um, but this is one of those games where you know we we a lot of people not named Brandon Walker have crowned Oklahoma and said, see, you know, they are the class of the Big Twelve again. They beat Texas. Texas beat Alabama. This this is one of those games where you know you could look up and be like, all right, like Brent Venables, like the, if he doesn't win this game, which I do think he will. If he doesn't, then it's like right back to like, all right, like what's going on? Because you don't you don't have a season that they're having and lose to Kansas. No disrespect to Kansas because they are much better than they used to be. Still is a weird a weird vibe around it. And Oklahoma has been hearing since the Red River shootout just how good they are. How they're going to end up in the playoff if they can win out. Kansas is a tricky team. So I'm right there with you, Brandon. I think that they are, I don't think it's going to happen, but they're definitely on watch. It's like a tornado warning versus a tornado watch. They're on a tornado watch. Conditions are favorable for that to turn into an interesting game. Yes. Um, all right. Up next, this is the player we are most excited to watch segment this weekend, presented by cars.com. Find your next possibility on cars.com. Where to next? Jack McGuire. If you could watch, one team, no, 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 one player this weekend. What player would that be? Malik Murphy out of Texas, quarterback. There, I wouldn't say there's a lot of hype out of him because there's probably more hype for his backup, who's the third string when Quinn is playing because, I mean, Arch Manning is one of the most hyped prospects we've had in a while. But Malik Murphy, people talk about him like he could be one uh, – phenomenal starter at a lot of places i want to see how he does in his first game that's truly his game he starts it's his team i feel like texas fans are very confident in him the program's confident in him it was a great job by the program to keep him on texas that for this season uh, because you know not to say arch wouldn't be good but if he was injured or if quinn was injured like he was last year and Malik wasn't here. I I don't know if Texas is feeling as good in this weird period. So I want to see how he does in his first first start, and I'm excited. I he's he's built like a truck, man. He's he's huge. <laughs> he's huge and huge. And he's fast. He can throw the ball a mile. Let's let's see how 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 well this guy plays. All right, Casey, player you're most excited to watch. Uh, I'm just going off of jackets, whoever plays a quarterback for Texas, obviously Malik Murphy is who we think is going to start and play the whole game. But if it is Arch Manning, I mean, that would be one of the most highly anticipated starts we've seen. I don't, I mean, not starts, the highly anticipated quarterback play we've seen in, I don't know how long, because he is a Manning. Obviously his recruitment was so big. If somehow he was to ever start that a game for Texas this year, obviously the whole world would be watching because it's Arch Manning. So whether it's Malik Murphy or Arch Manning, I think that the Texas quarterback situation is very interesting. And you said it earlier, Brandon, if Texas is going to win the Big 12 and beat Oklahoma in the rematch, you would assume that it, Quinn Ewers has to be healthy because Quinn Ewers is the reason that they're there. However, if Malik Murphy or Arch Manning is, a, is as highly touted and is as talented as we think that they could be, it might not necessarily matter, which is ridiculous to say because Quinn Ewers is so good. 
But like, can you imagine if Quinn Ewers is out for longer than we anticipate and say somehow Arch Manning starts the Big 12 championship against OU? That would be incredible. So their quarterback situation for the Longhorns is is my pick. Katie, what player are you most excited to watch? Uh, one quick question first. Who do we think is going to get more media hype? Shadur Sanders this year or Arch Manning next year? Arch. I would say Arch, but I think that there's a caveat in there. It's like... I don't think Arch Manning is going to be, like, dapping up LeBron James on the sidelines. I'll tell you the truth about Shadur be. Sanders. I'll tell you the truth about Shadur Sanders. I don't feel like he got that hype until he played like he deserved the hype. I, I, I think coming into the season, he wasn't all that hype, and then all of a sudden he destroyed TCU. He played well against Nebraska. He was dominant the first two or three weeks, and that created the hype around him. So Arch's hype is going to be – all external and because of what they expect him to be. Shadur's hype, I think, was because of how well he played when he That's got the point. opportunity. That's a really good point. Yeah, like we, like you. Now Shadur will always be able to live a certain type of lifestyle because of his dad and because of Dion's celebrity. But you're right, like people wouldn't be like you know doing the watch thing and stuff if he hadn't have played really well. But Art, I mean, again, the most obvious statement ever: having a last name named Manning, you're going to have the most ridiculous expectations and hype around you, regardless of if it's fair or not. Katie, your player? It's Graham Mertz. I think we've seen the whole going from Wisconsin, the, that one Heisman game to bottoming out, start at Florida. This is, I know, all I see in the timeline right now is, is Florida fans talking about his numbers. Um, I think this is just a very big eyeball game for him. Is he actually going to match the numbers, play against a really good defense, or is it a nope, it was all a facade, the numbers really don't add up, and he's not the guy. I mean, just to see. Also, like, if Florida is competitive, it's because of him. Brandon Walker, who is your one player right. to watch? I have two things. First, a little comment on Malik Murphy, who Jack brought up. This is very interesting. It's the world of college football that we live in now. I think this is a fascinating game because it is a tryout game for Malik Murphy, and mm. it's not even a tryout for being the Texas quarterback next year. It's probably a tryout for being somebody else's quarterback next year. He's probably able to go out there and play very well or, or, or struggle or whatever and put himself in the portal and give himself a great opportunity going forward because I do think Arch Manning is the quarterback of Texas next year no matter what. So for Malik Murphy, I think this is an opportunity to get out there Show everybody what you got and go transfer to a Power 5 school next year and be their guy. That's what I think. Now, my guy? Wait, hold on, Brandon. Follow up there. Do you think that there is anything Malik Murphy could do this season to make him the starter at Texas next year? Anything? Yeah, if he throws for, if he dominates BYU, he dominates the next game, they have to use him the rest of the year. He dominates every game and wins a national title. Yeah, I think he's their guy. And so then would Arch Manning transfer? I don't know. Too too far down the road. Too far down the it's road. It's just um, it's wild to think. Like, yeah, obviously they win a national title. But he's going to get the job, but it's like, what if he? What if they? You know, have a really good season. He loses to you know OU in a rematch in a close game, and but he looks really really good. It's like, sorry kid, we've got a Manning behind you. So many sad. Go somewhere else. Too many hypotheticals. My uh my guy to watch this weekend is Carson Beck. You want a you want a kind of a buried Heisman contender? It's Carson Beck. I know all the Pac-12 quarterbacks, and I know J.J. McCarthy. Carson Beck's put up numbers, and now he's about to have some opportunity to go out there and show that it's him and not Brock Bowers. Brock Bowers is hurt, but I think they have a terrific receiving core aside from him that is going to step up. If he continues to put up numbers, if he puts up numbers in a big game against Florida, puts up numbers against Ole Miss, this guy is going to get in the mix if they continue to win, and I think they're good enough to continue to win. Carson Beck is somebody to keep an eye on going forward in the second half where people are going to realize, oh, fuck, he, he's good. That's what uh, that's what I think. That's my guy. All right, there we go. That's Brandon, a good... I have a question for you before we get out of here. Yeah. Well, since you believe that Michigan has now killed the sport for you, as you said on the last episode, you know, you found out Santa Claus wasn't real. Right. Uh, will you actually be watching football on Saturday or is it just too dead for you? No, I, I will watch because it's Michigan's bye week. Uh, luckily, we, don't, we will not have the stink and the stench of Michigan hovering over the sport. So I can pretend that this Saturday is like years of yesteryear where Michigan hadn't ruined the sport. Now, next week, going to be a little tough. But this week, without having to see that atrocious, ugly, winged helmet, I can 
pretend that we still live in a world where college football is about all that's right and pure in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people usually say that college football and purity, married, handshake together. Those those things are, are just synonymous. Agreed. There, Agreed. There is something that came just came out from the reporting of Richard Johnson. I think he works for Sports Illustrated. Just want to give him that's just credit. two names for Dick. Yeah, Richard Johnson. Yeah, he. You're he, such a child. He's a former Florida man. He's a rising star award winner. He's split zone duo SI now he works for. He, according to text, review are that Sports Illustrated were able to obtain. I don't know how. Stallions, now 28, revealed, this is from the article, revealed that he was part of a small group of people two of whom he said were at low-level positions on different college football coaching staffs who were putting their heads together on a, a long-term plan to run the Michigan football program. Stallions claimed to have a Google document between, wait for it, 550 and 600 pages long that he managed daily containing a blueprint for the Wolverines' future. He referred to the document as a movement more than a plan, dubbing it, the Michigan Manifesto. Oh Stop. my god. I swear to God, this is not this is not parody. This is This isn't an onion article? This is not I I've been for the past fifteen minutes trying to verify that Richard Johnson wasn't making a joke. No. This is reported at Sports Illustrated. The Michigan Manifesto is what Connor Stallions dubbed it. I don't think you should call anything a manifesto. Uh, -oh. uh no. Has anything, just, has anything good ever come out of a manifesto? Uh, no, I think there's – no. Yeah, well, it depends who you ask. I'm pretty sure. Okay. The Karl yeah, Marx without, wrote without a kidding. manifesto, and people still uh, still walk around with his, his face on. This helps Michigan, though. This is going to oh, help. Oh, 100%. This, 100%. This is like – they're going to say this is a crazy man yeah, that was working for us. This is going to be the exact – like. Yeah, they're going to bury him. Oh, 100%. Harbaugh's fine. Uh, Michigan's fine. Single lone lone actor, which lone I think actor, is, yeah, yeah. And then he just happened to get he just happened to get. We had no idea the signs, the and then the, we had the, no idea who yeah. he hired. Like, but if it comes out that Michigan was paying for the tickets, then it's different. That's a so far that's the biggest question. It's like if you make fifty five k, is it also just funny like just shaming him in that where the money is? Like I think Mich that if Michigan can prove where that money came from, they're gonna be totally fine. You want to talk about super fans? This no, this guy was like it's this guy wasn't even a super fan. I mean, his whole life was Michigan football. And that's what people were DMing me. They said since he was a kid, all he cared about was Michigan football. And he had a manifesto about it. All right. I gotta go. Um any, that's a, any thoughts about Kentucky, Tennessee, quickly? Yeah, I almost had it as my under the radar game. Uh it's it, a lot of hatred there. Um I don't know. I don't think Kentucky's very good. I don't know how good Tennessee is, so maybe I'll I'll update that later uh, on Twitter. I gotta go. I gotta I gotta pee. Um, so that's a good place to end. That's unnecessary roughness.